Good morning. We are broadcasting live in the chamber. Good morning. This is Lourdes from the Chambers. Welcome to the Environmental Room Preservation Board. I see we have our chair, Steve Cayer, our vice chair, Lina Sierra. Uh, we also have um, our other board members, so we have more than three, meaning we have quorum. Good morning to all. <coughs> our applicant is also present, Leslie Perez Pizarro. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hello, how are you? We're recording live. Um, Mr. Kaya? Let's give one more minute to see if anybody shows up and then we'll start. We have one item on today's agenda, Lester Perez, but we'll give a minute or two to the additional board members to join us, of course. Mr. Um, Pizarro, I'll just take the moment to ask you, you, will you be sharing our screen or would you like Mr. Calle to do so? Either way. Um, I could I could share the screen. Um, Very well. Um, just, uh, We're giving yeah, give, 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 it, give us a second now, I'll let you know when we can share. Right. Sure. We're gonna... Good morning, Mariano. Oh, no. Let's see, <laughs> let, let's see. Let's see if we solve the issue yet. Oh, it Colin. doesn't seem like we solved it. Call in, Mariano. He, he has his earphones, so. No, but he has to call in now. He has to call in, yeah. Mariano, you should have gave me a call. I would have stopped by and fixed it for you. Yeah, you can be saying whatever you want. No one can yeah, understand what you're saying. Uh, I, I, I'm not <laughs> well-versed in ASL. No. <laughs> I, I, Mr. Kaya, I wouldn't encourage that. <laughs> Say whatever you want. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> okay. Um, Mariana, see if you can try to call in. Recording in progress. There we go. Now we're recording. All right. Let's call to order the meeting, the RPB meeting of May 3rd, 2022. Um, we have one one applicant on the agenda today. Let's start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you will. Perfect. Um, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United, States, United States of America, America. and to the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. All right, let's go ahead and start with the uh, roll call. Um, staff, if you don't mind. Thomas Pepe, City Attorney. Ray Jane Tompkins, Finance and Zoning Director. Lourdes Cabrera. Marcus Lightfoot. Thank you, guys. And on the board, we have Steve Kaye. Rebecca Lina. Cruz. Rebecca Cruz. Agustin Barrera. Nina Sierra. And Mariano, the mute. Um, Lourdes, I think we're ready to start, so we can swear you in. Mr. Pepe, please. Yes. <clears throat> Do you sir, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Uh, okay. And uh, Mr. Pizarro. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Just let, let the record show we also have Mr. Suarez in as well as uh, another board member attending. Mr. Suarez, you are in, correct? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Computer problem. Okay, Mariana, it sounds Mariana, like you're in, right? Like you're in, right? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. You have to turn Hang on. on. I got to do something else here. Yeah. No, no, I did it. I muted you. You're good. Story of my life. No, still calm. There's still a little bit of a echo. Um, okay, Lourdes, I think we can go ahead and start. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. ERPB board members, applicants, and staff. The first item for review this morning is ERPB 2022-013. Applicant Lester Perez Pizarro, property owner 61 Avenue LLC, location 7721 Southwest 61st Avenue. The request is for a two-story uh, new construction 
It is the first review of the Environmental Review and Preservation Board. You have the um, preliminary um, package, which includes the uh, architectural, the landscaping, and the grading before you this morning. Also, the property survey is uh, included. This um, property is located within the RS3 zoning district. Um, plans, um, as I stated, we have the architectural and we also have plans prepared by a landscape architect being that it is a two-story home. Um, the lot has a frontage of 72 feet, uh, fronting 61st Avenue, which um, obviously fails to meet the 75 feet minimum lot uh, frontage, the width of the lot required within the RS3 zoning district for section 20-3.5H. However, although the lot is <coughs> a lot it's a non-conforming lot of record because of the lot frontage. Mind you, the total lot size is of 10,080 square feet, which is just um, above the 10,000 requirement. So it's non-conforming um, as per the frontage. Again, however, it is um, a non-conforming lot of record because of lot frontage to the code permits new construction, even if it fails to meet the requirements of area or with or both. In this case, it's just the lot width. Uh, provided that the yard dimensions um, and requirements other than those area, in this case the width, is um, the only thing that does not comply. The um, building design principles to be considered by the Environmental Review and Preservation Board include, but not limited to height, scale, color, texture, appropriateness, and aesthetic quality of all proposed buildings and other structures. Within the RS3 zoning district, section 20-3.5H of the Land Development Code, um, we have the lot at 10,080, uh, the subject lot is 10,080, allows a 30%, the proposed is just at that with 3,024 square feet for the building coverage. The FAR allowable is 0 0.45 of 4,536. The proposed is under with 4,320, which equates to 42.8%. Uh, the impervious coverage allows 40%, and we're exactly at 4,032 square feet of the proposed. There's a breakdown uh, of these uh, diagrams on sheet SP2. The elevations and materials um, are illustrated on the elevations and noted as such. Um, I'll let the architect um, describe and, and mention his um, design, describe his design and so forth and answer your questions later. Mainly, it is a um, modern design which meets the heights taken from the parapet. So it's from gray to the top of parapet and we have a building height of 24.6 which is under the allowable of 25. However, the zoning table notes it uh, from the average high between a high and a low pitch roof. Now, that's not the case, so we need to know the height to the top of the parapet, which is consistent with the design illustrated on the elevations, and that is of 24.6, consistent with uh, meeting the code with less than 25 feet, which is the maximum. The development um, review committee met on April 12th, 2022. Since then, the grading um, plan has been, um, you know, revised to include um, grade elevations uh, along the property lines and um, some contour lines. Um, the landscaping plan um, has been prepared, as I mentioned, by a landscaping architect, and we do have a tree removal that is required because of the existing trees and palms uh, to be transplanted on this lot. Therefore, this is a condition in the report. Additionally, the proposed two-story must comply with the 2020 Florida Building Code. And at this time, the applicant is requesting preliminary approval of the building and the landscaping from the ERPD. Recommendations from staff is uh, preliminary approval with the following conditions. Meet requirements set forth in section 23.5H, dimensional requirements two-story, shall comply with the landscaping section 24.5, 
as I stated, the proposed building height and the zoning table should match the elevation. Again, being that it's a parapet design is to the top of the parapet, not the average. Property owner to make a payment in lieu of solar panels uh, to the solar collector trust fund prior to the certificate of occupancy. And obviously we'll have engineering plans prepared for the final environmental review and preservation board review and um, any conditions from the board. Thank you. Welcome Lester Perez Pizarro to the board. Thank you very much. Um, good morning members of the board and some staff. Uh, my name is uh, Lester Perez Pizarro and, and I am the architect of the project and principal of Atelier 305. Uh, let me just share the screen. Um, Um, ca can you see the, the screen? Yes. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Um, so um, the proposed home for um, 7721 Southwest 61st Avenue is aimed to be compatible in size with the context. Um, the renders um, illustrate the, the two, um, two top images, the, the, the front facade of the house, which consists in the juxtaposition of two Trains, um, we um, um, and a transitional courtyard uh, towards the main uh, entrance of the house. Uh, we blend um, uh, these um, in terms of material. We are using a uh, smooth finish, uh, painted um, white stock combined with bronze uh, mullions that uh, integrates um, the, the 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 garage treatment, which is with frosted. Um, glass with the with the rest of the of the windows carpentry and doors carpentry of the of the house. Um, on the rear facade, we incorporate as an accent uh, some uh, with wood cladding uh, treatment. Um, we would use um, uh, weather resistant um, uh, uh, wood cladding uh, such as Ipe or or Resista, ideally. Um, which is a, an engineered uh, wood that is resistant to weather. Um, in terms of um, the way the house is assembled, um, sorry, in the rear elevation, we also uh, propose uh, this um, use of position of frames where the, uh, we have the, a double height uh, living room oriented towards the, the pool. Beyond we have um, the dining uh, room, which is oriented also towards the side courtyard. And then the family is oriented uh, towards the rear uh, terrace with the kitchen beyond. Uh, I'll show you um, uh, in plan uh, shortly this. Um, let me just, um, so here we can see how the the living room, which is a double height, and, and the and the dining is oriented towards the side courtyard. Uh, then we have the the kitchen and family that creates a transition into the, the covered terrace uh, on, the, on the rear portion. Uh, we also have a, a double height foyer uh, that creates a vertical articulation of the space inside the house. Um, on the rooftop, um, we have um, a centrally located uh, roof terrace. We're proposing a, a centrally located roof terrace away from the street view and, and also away from the side um, from the side yards uh, to, to to recess from the from the neighbors uh, view uh, and oriented into the, the rear yard which is the, the biggest depth of, of yard that we have um, I'm going to to jump quickly to to the landscape um, plans give me just one second. So in terms of landscape, the, the highlights, besides keeping uh, most of the existing uh, landscape uh, trees that are uh, great, uh, um, we are um, adding uh, two pigeon plums on the, along the right of way, uh, three on the upper, um, um, on the north uh, side of the parcel, north uh, east side of the parcel, uh, upper left uh, area of the rear yard. Um, we are proposing three autograph trees, and then we are proposing um, two um, Japanese blue mirror on the on the side uh, yard. 
everything yeah. else is uh, our existing trees uh, to to remain, uh, which are mature and are very um, and, and are great. Uh, also, we are proposing um, uh, a hedge uh, to to provide privacy to the from the side and rear uh, neighborhood, a lush hedge. Um, I'm going to jump quickly to the civil to the grading plan. So, in terms of uh, grading, basically, we are propos proposing multiple swells, not to obstruct the root the root system of the existing trees. And that's basically what I wanted to to point out about the about the civil. Um, let me go back to architecture. So, um, so basically, this um, 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 concludes my my presentation and, and uh, I am open to your to your comment and feedback and, and I greatly appreciate the opportunity to present this project. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Pepe, do we want to see if there's any comments Yes. Or feedback. Yes, if if there's anyone on Zoom who would like to speak to this item, you'll have to raise your virtual hands. Do that. Wave your mouse pointer over the bottom of your screen, and you'll see the words "reactions." Click on those word or that word, and you'll see the words "raise hand." Click on that. It will raise your hand, and the chairman will then, when it's time, will allow you to speak. Uh, is there anyone on Zoom who would like to speak to this item? I don't see anybody. I don't see any raised hands. Is there anyone in chambers? There's nobody in the chambers. All right, uh, Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, you can close the public hearing. All right, public hearing is closed. Uh, let's go ahead and open up to board comments and reviews. Um, Let's start off with uh, Mariana. Let's 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 talk about the landscape, and then we can move on from that. Can we jump to the landscape? Actually, uh, let's start with the site plan of the architect. Okay. Sure. sure. Give me just one second. So let's let's go there for a second. Oh, what did I, what did I do with my with my drawing? Ah. Okay, site plan. Okay. Yes. Hang on one second, sir. This is a suggestion to you. Um, code in terms of the distance from a swimming pool to the, the back property line is 10 feet. I want you to notice you only you place that swimming pool three feet away from the house. Am I correct in, my, in assessing that? Yes. Yeah, uh, maybe, okay. maybe it's like a three and a half or four feet. I need to double check. Okay. So that means, that means, that means you're going to have to shore that portion of the house to protect the footing especially on a two-story building. So my recommendation to you is you got six more feet that you can move the swimming pool back so that you can give yourself at least something to be able to walk out of the living room that is a little bit wider than just three feet. Again, my recommendation, this is your design, but it doesn't make sense to me to have that swimming pool right on top of the living room. So, and then especially if you're only three feet away from the house, you will have to shore that because you've got to protect that footing on the house. Well, there's a, so, there's a, from, so from that perspective, uh, then now let's go to the landscape plan. Um, this is a third or fourth time that this landscape architect has come before us. Um, he has done some good plans in the past. And he has done some questionable in the past. But here's one that I question. Why would you put in a very tight space at the entrance bamboo that spreads like a sucker? Because that's the one he's specifying. If you were to specify something that uh, is non-spreading. But the, uh, the uh, bamboo gracilis spreads rapidly and it will take over. Oh, if yeah. that's the intent, is that the intent? Good luck. M Mariano, because, uh, quick, yeah. Mariano, real quick question. Is it a runner or a clumper? 
Oh, no, they, they're runners. They start to okay. spread out by runners, and they, they start multiplying. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, from that from that perspective, uh, I think he should take a look at that. I'm, I don't have a problem with bamboo because I know how it can be used. I have a problem with the use here is in the wrong spot. It can now, use a different type of bamboo. The it only can use other blue way, bamboo, black bamboo that doesn't spread. Yeah, Mariano, the other, the other option is building uh, – the only thing I've, I've told people to do, and again, I would do it with clumpers more than I would do it with runners, is they would have to dig a hole at least four feet deep and build a oh, yeah. solid wall around it and hope that it doesn't crack because the bamboo will go through those cracks. Yes, in fact, in, in fact, it, when you um, when you go to houses that are that have planted bamboo many years ago, they have to bring a bulldozer to knock those things out. Right. So, no, no, they're they're very deep. So, I, I, the only bamboo I have here in my house is they're all clumpers, and even with them being clumpers. I put a barrier in with that barrier because every once in a while it develops a small crack and the bamboo will go through that crack. It does not take much. Yeah. So now, Les, sir, let me say this. Oh, go ahead, Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Just wanted to ask, where is the bamboo in this in this rendering? I don't see the bamboo. Yeah. Right at the very entrance between the garage and the bedroom, as oh. you enter the door, the door. I agree. That stuff's going to go out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yes. Yes. So, Lester, let me just say this to you. I think the house is very nice. Uh, it has a nice balance to it. Um, I'm just going to give you two of my three points because, again, I always believe that I should leave the comments to the architects. That's why they're on board. Um, but uh, I love the glass at the back um, from that perspective. So in terms of your architecture and so forth, I, this is one board member that really likes the house, okay? Um, and continuing, in terms of the landscape, um, you beat the requirement. I just wish there was more, a um, little bit more color, more color <clears throat> in the landscape just to, to animate a little bit. So those are basically my, my comments. Now let's go to the grading plan. Um, where is the grading plan? Let, let, yes, let, let me. Yes, let me. Uh, the grading plan. Sure. Here's the uh, grading. Uh, Hold on. Let's see. Let's see if it was on the files that we got because I, I was looking hey, for. There it. is. There is grading. There is. There is grading. Can we see here? It's um in the set. Is be is be behind uh sheet sp two. Sp two. Okay. I oh, got it. Got it. Yes. Um, Lester, so let me ask you a question. What would you say is going to, what would be the construction cost of this house by the time it's finished? What's your estimation? Well, right now it's hard to tell because the construction prices keep going up and up, but I would say. Mariano, uh, I, Mariano I can tell you that. Around, around a million dollars, more or less, I would say. Um, uh, a million, um, uh, maybe a million, and a half, maybe, maybe 1.2 million, one, one million, one million, two. Yes. Mariano, on the, on the file, it says 750. On the what? I mean, I'm not the expert on this. The contractor is the, you know, the, the, the developer. No, no, I, I, I miss it. I was just, I was just curious to, to see how much of the it was going to cost in terms of the construction costs and so forth, because I also want to be fair, from the perspective in terms of the landscape, that not only it balances out the house. I don't right. want, I, I, if, if the house is going to cost say seven hundred fifty thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars, I don't want the the person moving in here to spend thirty-five thousand dollars in landscape. That's Understood. ludicrous. Understood. Understood. But I do want. I but I but I do like to see something that is pleasant in the of front. Uh, and this has been always my case. So I'm just letting you know. This board has known that my uh, pet peeve is that the front looks good in terms of the compatibility of the neighbor. I know your neighbor there's next door is eh, but you got other houses. Um, that is being built that are that seems to be coming up online that looks very nice. So Perfect. in terms of your in terms of your grading, um, one of the things I'm going to appreciate is what you did that you came out two feet and then you started sloping as opposed to creating a berm. Because if there's one issue that uh, Mr. Suarez and I have been saying, when you put a berm. Where do you begin and where do you end it? And how, how do you end that berm when you're wrapping it and around you, the house? 
and how do you maintain it? The biggest problem we've seen yeah. is it's impossible to maintain. It falls apart, the roots uh, tear apart berms. So even public works has gone away from berms. Yeah, now the only thing that's missing here, Lester, sure. we require that you have spot elevations on each corner of the property. Okay. And then all around the perimeter, every 25 feet a spot elevation. Why do we ask that? And, I, and the reason I'm gonna explain this to you because maybe it was not explained to you. You're support, if, you, if you've got a guy that knows how to do grading, he can be able to bring that contour into your property, wrap it around, create your soil areas without having any water going into your neighbor's property. If you yeah. know, it's a study that Mr. Suarez has said that um, what causes uh, uh, bad drainage is bad engineering. So uh, when I'm looking at this, you, this is a good start, but because you're missing the spot elevation, it's very difficult to be able to say, are you doing this correctly in terms of the depth and the uh, other swell and, and how big. By the way, do you have, uh, uh, no, there's no uh, drain field or septic tank here, correct? Uh, in this case, I think, uh, I think we do. No, I, I think in this case is, um, no, I think in this case is sanitary uh, so, sewer, sanitary. if I'm not incorrect. Uh, in, in this case, we have, a, sorry, we don't have, a, we have a, a public, um, uh, you know, uh, Sanitary sure. main line in the street, if I'm not incorrect. Got it, got it. We, for, fortunately, so, we don't need we don't need septic tank here. Okay, yes. good. So otherwise, that's all the only comments I have, and uh, I'll let the rest of the board uh, members uh, get their input. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Suarez. Mike, you want to follow up with that? Yeah, there's some key issues that um, I'd like to fill in. Uh, one is. What type of roof drains are you having? Uh, we're proposing, proposing uh, let me go to the roof plan. Um, we're proposing uh, roof drains. Uh, let me. Um, basically, we are proposing um, roof drains and the, um, the perimeter to avoid this, uh, um, you know, this overflow that are kind of ugly. Uh, we're proposing a a perimeter that is uh, four inches above the, the low point, above the roof drain, um, that serves as, a, as an emergency drain. So the full perimeter of the, of the house pretty much uh, serves as the emergency drain in case. Okay, uh, I'm, not worried. I'm not worried about the emergency drains because that really should never, you know, that's just for code and okay, that's gonna be the exception. So. Okay, so, so uh, well, the, you're, you're using roof drains that go into the ground then for the roofs? Uh, those roof drains go into the into um, into a down spot, and that down, those down spots distribute along the side of the house, inside the, the, the walls, and they discharge to the site. Oh, so, so they are discharging to the site, not to the um, underground? Not to the underground, no, because we don't have here where we have swells, we don't have exfiltration okay. trench. Okay, so now if you go to drawing C1, as yeah. um, Give me one second. let's go to C1, which is your grading yes, plan. Let me, let me open it. Uh, hold on. Um, C1. Okay, one is, in talking to these roof drains, you have a lot of holes. You, have, you, know, you show the grading really great in, in rectangles and boxes, but you don't show any grading in between these boxes. So it is critical that where you have these roof drains, you want to make sure that it drains to a low point. So you don't show where your roof drain aligns with your grading plan so that it doesn't go to, you know, that it doesn't get stuck somewhere. And you have too many gaps between your drain, like, let's, like as an example, look at your swimming pool. All yes. around the swimming pool, you have zero grading. Right. Yes. And if you look on the south side, you have on the south east side and southwest, you show great grading, but nothing in between. And yet all your roof drains on the south side of the house is going into that, a good portion of it into an ungraded area. So 
you got you have to show grading for the entire site and even though the swimming pools in the future you got to show what the elevation of the swimming pool uh, edges are and you have to show the grading around the swimming pool that's so right. you have to show continuous grading everywhere okay you fill in these gaps okay. now the one caveat what is that you are saving some existing trees and you cannot raise unless you raise the tree you have to work your grading around the existing tree because otherwise if you add soils around the trees you're going to kill the tree so your options are is either and, and we understand this is you work your grading around the tr existing tree to remain or raise the tree um, as, as mr corral said around the perimeter you have to show the grades on the four corners the existing grades remain and the existing grades remain along the perimeter because you cannot touch your um you know the, the grading of your neighbor um next thing is if you go to sheet l1 make okay. see look at look at when l1 you have a grade going going out coming out the main entrance make sure that your l1 matches your other sheet because your your driveway connects to a sidewalk that comes up the middle of that opening, not to the side. See how you have the gray? Right, uh, right yes. there. Uh, pro probably, I mean, he probably covered the left side of the of the pedestrian area in within the same footprint. Uh, let's just to compare. Let me quickly open the. Well, uh, and before you before you, before you change pages, you also have on this sheet. Yes. To go back to that, you have a sidewalk that goes straight out which now is gone. So make sure L1, you know, all your sheets match. Correct. Yes, the, the, the landscape architect is representing here the, the old house that has been removed. Probably, um, I think he should, first of all, he should, in the industry position plan, he should remove the existing, uh, I mean, what is demolished, you know, the, the this yes, absolutely. And these elements, this belong to the old house. So he should remove that to for for better clarity. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Now, yes. you also have is the um, that staircase exterior staircase that goes up to your rooftop garden. Yes. Yep. Let me go. Because you have to be very very careful, because right now your impervious area, you are maxing out your impervious, yes. and you're leaving absolutely zero working room for any changes, any errors in calculations and so forth. No, my suggestion is leave yourself a few square feet of, of wiggle room is the way this is designed, you cannot go from your rooftop to your swimming pool, which would seem like a natural path and you don't have any paved areas other than through the through the house to get to the swimming pool area. Yes, well, I mean, for for my client, for matter of of a security, you know, so so people cannot just have access to to the upper portion of the house. Um, he would rather keep a private. Uh, let me just go to the second. Yeah, yeah, no, I I understand that, but I'm saying is going from there. Yeah, you know, it's like. The only way to the backyard is through the house. There is no walkway around the house to get to the backyard. The only way to get through there without stomping through the grass and killing it is through the house, which is very unusual. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Um, in the that is correct. That's the that's the the that has been the intention to to accommodate a, a large landscape around and. And, and everything in the in terms of the stairs, uh, I wanted to show you the the second level that basically um, we have a um, accommodated in a way that we use the main stairs, and then immediately we can continue to go all the way up to the roof without um, in, without invading the privacy of the of the adjacent bedrooms or mm -hmm. or or corridors. So we we can we have we can have a continuous flow of, of circulation. Okay. Um, Inside. without cutting through uh, next to a, a, a you know a bedroom door or or, or anything. 
Uh, and yes, let me go to the to the landscape plan. Um, basically, by the, the way, since you're going there, uh, Lester, um, please have uh, Derek also show where the uh, conservation uh, zone is and the tree that's supposed to be by the AC. Uh, which, if do if you don't have the room, uh, then don't worry about it because uh, this code is to me it's code. You're supposed to put a large shade tree to be able to cover that AC to reduce the the heat coming out of there. And it's the most ridiculous thing because if you talk to an AC guy, you say, you don't want to cover it. Because the, the hot air is coming up, uh, it causes a problem. But anyway, it, but it does have them called out for that uh, energy calculation. Yeah. Okay. No, so, no, Lester, I am seeing that the, that the, that staircase stop, you know goes from the second floor up to the roof, but underneath it, you do have a pair of double doors that slide open and it has no landing for it and no, like you go nowhere. Yes, this is, this is basically to create a, uh, to, to provide it, to propose the opportunity of um, cross ventilation. Um, uh, that is basically the, the, the purpose of, of that. But I mean, these doors would pretty much remain uh, close because the main, um, I mean, the, the main attraction of the house is, is towards the back. Uh, this is more to, to create a, a connection to the, to the, to the landscape uh, beyond and to the nature around. Um, so usually some, you would have some, some type... owners appreciate that. Some others, usually they, they keep it close. You know, they, they keep this, uh, this area, the windows and sliding and everything close. Uh, so the AC doesn't go okay. Well, I'm just saying that right now you're maxed out that you cannot put any pavers, anything, and no fencing, because since you're literally to the square foot, Understood. if you put up a fence, the footings are part of impervious. Understood. So you can't yeah, close off yeah, the yeah, back yeah. from the front. Oh, so I'll I, say, I you know, wait, 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 I hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second, Lester. You know, guys, we're going to have to come up with something here because – I mean, I now understand that the the footing is part of the impervious, but he's got to put a fencing to be able to protect that swimming pool by code, which is not shown here. Yes. And the there's a time when we got to overlook a couple of things here, guys. I mean, we cannot just. Uh, and I get it, Jose. Okay, and I, I and I follow you, but he's got to do it. He's got to put that fence up. It's it's a code. Well, and again, I'm just going by precedent that that is something yeah, that I know, that, I know. That staff and I, I agree with staff is that is an impervious area. And so, you know, to me, it's smart to block off the front from the back. I mean, it's just that's one on one. That's going to if it doesn't happen in construction, it's going to happen at some point. You don't want people going into your backyard. So, so that's true. Um, now, Lester, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Yes, I, yes, I have a, I have a question about that. Um, uh, to my understanding, when we do, um, because uh, for some reason is uh, is missing here, but by code for the construction document we have to in, uh, to include it, uh, as you mentioned for for protection from the pool. Um, our intention is to provide a side gate side uh, gates, you know, to the to the fence, and then a fence in the perimeter. Uh, but it would be a fence; it would not be. Uh, I am aware that the, when you do, like if in the front of the property, that my client doesn't uh, doesn't want to have a front uh, gate. Uh, but when you have a front gate, uh, you know these columns they count towards the impervious area. You know they, this. Uh, 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 however, what what we're gonna propose, which is on the side of the passing the the front facade, you know, on the on the side of the property, would be basically. Uh, like an aluminum um, um, fence. Picket fence. Exactly, picket fence. That, that uh, to my understanding, that type of fence uh, doesn't count in terms of, of impervious because it's, a, it's like almost negligible uh, size. You know, it's a, I'm, I'm probably in the site and a rear yard might be a, maybe a, a chain link fence. It, it would be a very simple fence. It would not be a, yeah, probably I would, I would say an aluminum fence that is um, uh, the one that is uh, of the slats that has privacy that provides. Yeah, privacy. But, but but you're still going to have because you're going to have gates. Each side of the gate is going to have a footing, and and that footing is going to be at least a square foot on each one, 
and 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 right now staff counts not against you. So, Mr. Mr. Gate, Bizarre, what what you should do there is just just coordinate with with zoning with, with right. Ms. Ms. Cabrera to make sure that you're okay with with what they allow. So just just coordinate with her right. on those specifics, and, and 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 you should be fine with it. Thank you very much for the for the for the note. That I will keep that in mind to to coordinate. With now, you. Where's your um now the the way the swimming pool is designed is got nowhere for any lounge chairs or anybody sitting around the pool. And again, um, that's, you know, something you may want to consider is a wood deck, something like that, uh, an elevated wood deck around the swimming pool, um, because that would allow, would not count towards your impervious other than the peers themselves. But, you know, in a house this nice, they're going to have nice furniture around that pool. And so something that to think of. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I will discuss that with Sony particularly because uh, my main concern here is the the, the impervious uh, space that we are very limited. Um, I mean, uh, of course, the, the, the client would love to have a area around the pool to to like a like a pool deck and all that. But if you have to choose a he, 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 will, he will be willing to compromise that in order to, to not compromise like the covered terrace or other areas uh, that are uh, for him more useful. But I will double check the requirements to, to see if there is any kind of... Um, an, an, an elevated deck, an elevated deck, you only have to worry about the, the, the support uh, and just make sure you have a gap between each of the slats and perfect. don't make it too large. But you can go that that would be a route that would work for you in this design. Um, do you know where your transformer is for this house? Yeah, it's on the, it's on the side plan. I saw that it's in the back. It's in the back left corner, and it okay. has the has the light light coming down to the northeast building. corner. Yeah. Okay, um, I would make sure each transformer has gives uh, access to three houses typically here in South Miami. Make sure which of the three properties gives access to the transformer because you have a very tight side yards and just again i just something i share with all applicants from personal experience in our house the access to the transformer is through our house and because we allowed some um, banana plants and other stuff to overgrow they had to come in with special equipment to change out the transformer okay. so so just make sure if the access to the transformer is not from this lot, then you have no problem. Perfect, it is, if, it, if it is from this lot, then you want to make sure you provide five or six feet, I'd say probably six feet uh, path, clear path for the FP&L equipment to get to the transformer. We've had three transformers put at our house, and it's not a fun experience. How many... How so many we have, feet we're in good shape. To the property we're in good line. Shape. Here we have on the, on this side we have fourteen feet. On the, uh, on the yeah, right but side. you have trees. Yeah, uh, you have fourteen feet, but you have trees there. Understood. Yes, yes, yes. So, so again, it's only if the access to the transformer is from your yacht yard from this yard. If it's not, then you don't have a problem. I'm just Understood. just Understood. sharing that. From personal experience, it is not fun when you don't have proper access. It delays changing on a transformer or servicing it, huge, because you cannot get proper equipment. Um, because well, let me ask you a question about, hold on, hold on let me ask you a sure. question about that. If that was the case, wouldn't he have a six foot utility easement running along the back no. property? No, the no that's the, the, the six foot utility easement is for the, uh, for the power lines themselves. And I can tell you, go driving through South Miami, through Coral Gables, Pinecrest, and in our house, the uh, we have bamboo, and we actually have it clear underneath. And the when we have the power outage, since they just bringing every person they can, some of them not well trained, they started cutting trees that did not need to be cut, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, it's there. It's it's sad. Thank you very much for the note. I think uh, I'm going to just double check uh, on site, but uh, based on the on the tree uh, on the landscape plan, I think we should 
we should be okay. Um, we have 14 feet side setback, and the most critical um, point is uh, tree number 10, uh, which I'm pretty sure uh, uh, we are, we're going to have more than six feet um, clear, you know, uh, from the from the jungle of the tree to the side of the wall. Um, well, but coordinate that. To, coordinate that with drawing C1 because you're showing trees in a different location on C1. E, C1. C1. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, you know, on C1, you have some trees kind of in the middle there. See there? Oh, yes. Uh, C. Oh, C1. C1. Hold on a second. Uh, yes, let me check. Um, See, so, yes, so just, yes. just, just, just be careful. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank just, much. just make sure your plans uh, go. Now go to SP2. Okay, if you look at the drawing, building coverage on the top says 3,024. On the bottom, it says 3,013. 3,024? That's 24, and right below it, right below it, 3,013. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's probably a, some loose number that, that fell by... Well, oh, no, 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 sorry, 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 no, no, just for clarification. 3,013 is the count of previous area. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, we don't need an answer right now. Got it. Let me double because check. I have to double check that. Yes, yes, yes. Just double check because that could put you over again. You're, because you have zero wiggle room, Understood. just be very, very careful. Understood. Understood. I'm going to double check that to, to see which one is a, okay. Okay. Overall, a uh, very nice job on the house. I really like it. Um, you did a very, very, very nice uh, design. Thank you very much. I appreciate and I appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to make it so when you come back, you have a better chance of getting approved. Understood. Thank you. Miss Lee. Hey, good morning, um, Lester. I agree with Mariano about the the pool being too close to the house mm -hmm. or extraordinary. But if that's what the owner wants, right? Is that what the owner wants? Yes. Uh, he, he likes to feel the, to have the, um, this visual connection between the living room and the pool, yep. this, uh, this proximity. Um, Very nice. And the hedge that you're planting on the, on the sides, is that going to be Clusia or do you know? Oh, yes. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll share with you right now. Green that, wood. That's such a, such a super tight lot. And your house. As we, we keep saying, yes. it's, you're uh, maxed out. You're just right there. So either. So this is uh, square footage of the house. I'll tell you right now. Um, <laughs> okay, By the so way, well, green, he's, green, well, he's, green he's looking wood. it up for you. Yeah. Is that, it's green bottle green wood. wood. This is the oh, green here. bottle bush. Bottle brush? No, no green no, button, button, button wood. Button oh, wood. Button wood. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, they come in silver and green. I'm sharing here with, with you in this. Uh, yeah, button wood's good. I yeah. like it. Yeah, you let it go, it becomes a tree. Right, so you got to maintain it. But it looks great oh, as a head. Yes. The Clusia seems to be super popular anyway. He doesn't have any Clusia here, does he? Yes, he no, does. No, no. We, we, oh, use, we use green water wood instead of the Clusia. Okay, um, fine. That The other point I want to make, I think the front house is, of course, it's a lovely house. It's a beautiful design. And, but I don't, you know, for that lot, in my opinion, I'm just a citizen representative. It's it's it's, it's it doesn't fit in the lot, it, and it doesn't fit in, the, in on the street. There's no other house on the street that is parked like that. So that's that's all. Then I comment, and also if you if, if you can wiggle a little bit on the square footage of the house, then you'll have more room for you know um, to build walkway and whatever other little stuff you might you might need it's it's a really tight property you did an amazing job building up you know designing that house for that tight of a property but actually uh two houses down from this house because i was looking at a google earth there is one house that is modern yeah, and it's a, kinda, a yeah but it doesn't look yeah. like that this no 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 they, but they very very square in roof. other words it's, it has roof and yeah no i understand i'm i'm kind of on the uh on the 
long end of the stick on the profits of the neighborhood, but <clears throat> um, the neighborhood that before, before. is real short. It's charming. It's it just that that those three avenues from 62nd over to 59th are, are super nice, and, yeah. and and small lots, modest homes, beautiful vegetation, and and obviously as you just mentioned, there's a house down the street, a new house, you know. That's uh, big, but this one is just too big. The door is Actually, actually that, that house went to the board. I remember that one. They're finishing construction on it. Say again? That house went through the board, the one that's right down the street. I, went, I remember it. Yeah. yeah, it was an empty lot for 15 years with a, with a yeah. pool in it. I, I would like to emphasize oh. that these renders are not showing the, the existing trees that are very lush. Right. Uh, basically, when, once know. the house gets built, the, it's going to create a, a layering system between the, the, the very uh, mature trees that are on the site and the, and the house beyond. And, and a set of transparency between the the, the inside and the outside, uh, and and a, and a very nice connection with nature around. Yeah. Um, but the, the trees, I mean, the, I would say that the we are not are not giving credit here to the to the existing trees that are one of the most yeah, important right. values of the of the site. Most beautiful part of the property, and in the back, the windows, amazing. <laughs> You know, that's blazing sun and comes in, you know, until 11.30 or noon, that whole back. So I guess you accounted for that with the type of glass or the shading. Or, you know. And that's going to be a, a west, uh, I mean, that's an east sun, so it's not as bad as a west sun. No, but, you know, yeah. significant the, at 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, Lee, what's happening in South Miami is our land values have skyrocketed so much that the small homes like uh, like ours are just a matter of time before they get uh, torn down because land values are, it's over a million, well over a million dollars for a third of an acre right now. Right, so in, the, in, this, the in this zone and, you know, uh, in, South, in the south portion of South Miami, the land values have skyrocketed. So this is what we're going to be getting because that's get what the it. land values are dictating. I get it. I completely understand. I get it, but I understand. You know, there's nothing I can do about that type of thing. Yep. Just to make so the, the small house, the, sm the house a little smaller on the property would would be amazing. But that's not going to happen. I mean, the, the house on either side of it, there's going to be torn down eventually. Yep. And they're going to build a big house and you know fill up the lot. So. Thank you, Lee. Yep, thank you. Very, very quickly, uh, very quickly, please. Uh, Lester, do you understand when I said that you will have to shore that portion of the swimming pool because it's too close to the house? Do you understand what I mean by that? Yes, yes, understood. Okay. All right, yes, and you know that's you have to be at least five feet away from that from that footing in order to be able to, to do it without a shoring. I just want to make sure this is understood. Understood, yes, yes. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I was. Uh, 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 structure engineer. Yes. Totally. Yeah. You, you just have to deal with the structure engineer because I've gone through the same stuff too on my side. So it, it's it's doable. You just got to make sure you work with the structural engineer. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 Um. Sorry, Mr. Barrow. Yeah. Um. I have a quick question. One of the things is they're paying for into the solar panel fund and in lieu of solar panels. The drawings show solar panels. Sort. Are there not going to be solar panels then? Um, this is a good question, and and my client would like to um, to to under to understand the the solar panels. To my understanding, I, I did a previous house uh, a few years a, a, a ago in South Miami. Um, they are a requirement to be installed on CO, or they are required to be, um, a, let's say, pre-wired for future solar panels. Well, it has to be on CO because um, you're okay. including them in the plan. So in the plans, they'll show solar panels. So okay. they need to be inspected before the CO is given. Yes, of but, course. But again, if I were you, I would just talk to make staff and make sure that's true. But that's my understanding. 
No, because the application said that they were paying into the fund in lieu of solar panels. That's why I'm asking for a clarification. On the drawing, it's... Yes, that, that, is, that is our intention. That is our intention. The, the, okay. I mean, we are proposing the layout, the, the design intent for the layout, and then the solar panel company will come up with the shop drawings and, and the engineering uh, to, you know, to integrate, the, to incorporate their systems there. You okay. have, you have, you have, sorry, Mr. Barrow, just to follow up on your, um, you have stairs going up into the, the, the roof, right? Yeah, the, she has. A... Yeah, this, this, uh, we have a, a spire of stairs that, on the side that access the roof terrace. That is correct. And are you going to have sitting area or anything up there as well? Because yes, I saw you have a railing as well. Yes, the, exactly. So to make a close up here, so the roof terrace is this portion here. So this would be this would be railing, um, and this is this would be a panel to enclose the the condensing units, uh, and this is where the this is roof this is regular roof where the where the solar panel is. So so basically the railing is you know uh, protect serving as a guard from the from the roof terrace to the surrounding. Um, it, it just seems like you have you you guys have the most perfect scenario for solar panels here. But yeah, yeah, it really. Does. For the most part, I think most of this board's in favor of the solar panels, but that's obviously the owner's decision. Yes, yes. I mean, we could we could uh, extend um, if if um, upon the recommendation and and and, and cost. Uh, so in terms of the appliance that would be served by the by the solar panels, um, we could uh, extend along the sides of the of the of the of the terrace. To, to cover more surface of solar panels. Um, that's okay. between that's between you guys and the architect and the yeah. owner. So, but yes, I mean that's up to you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah so, I think that I think that the north side of it you can do that. Uh, the west side is probably more expensive. You know that uh, southeast corner is probably going to be expensive to bring that over. But yeah, you have along the north side you could extend it without a doubt. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Barry. Sorry about that. That's because okay. Connection, yes. Uh, in this area, it's gonna be uh, yeah. more feasible. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you're you. I I didn't see it on the drawings. What material were you gonna have on the roof terrace? Um, I would say um, I mean we could do the we would do the the the, the for the roof is is go, we're going to be using a waterproofing system instead of a roofing system. It's a fluid applied membrane. Um um. um I forgot the the strength or um, I forgot the, the 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 brand, but it's a it's a fluid applied membrane that uh, that looks like a like a very light gray paint. Yeah, like I'm, I'm familiar white. with it. And 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 same thing. Um, so here we would have the same waterproofing, and on top of that we would have a tile. Tile. Oh, it would okay. be a low, uh, this high albedo I think the one that is um, a light color tile. Yeah, I reckon definitely light color because then if not the heat load, exactly. it's gonna get it's gonna be horrible because there's no shade up there, so it'll be very hot. So, yes. I mean, overall, when I look at the elevations of the house in the front and the rear, I, I love the transparency, the openness of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very elegant. Um, I think you, you know, my concern is on the east exposure. Um, make sure you have the right uh, type of glazing specified, because I would hate to have to put shades on all that yes. because then you take away from the whole effect of having all that openness. So okay. make sure you, you deal with that and the type of glazing that you specify. Sure. Um, the, the problem you have on the, on the, on the rear of the house is, I mean, I, I, I have a pool. I don't see a pool working without a pool deck. I mean, I really don't. Uh, you have parties, you have activities, people are going to be walking around the grass. The grass is going to die. So, but you're maxed out on your impervious surface. So, um, I mean, ultimately, it's your client's house. And he's going to use it how he wants. But those are some of the challenges that have been brought up by other bo other board members also. But overall, I really, really like the, the clean lines of the house, the transparency of the house. I think it's very elegant. Uh, so, um, I'm in support of the item. A uh, really quick question or a comment is I agree with the glazing. Uh, glazing that is colored, you can see out great, but you cannot see into the house during the daytime. During the nighttime, people forget it's the opposite. People can see in like it's transparent, 
but they cannot see out at nighttime. So be very, very careful, especially, you know, any private rooms on the second floor um, that you want privacy, you're going to have to have some type of curtain system because it is a beautiful house um, with, you know, when the lights are on and so forth. But, you know, at some point you're probably going to have some curtains there. So, Of course, of course, of course. Also the, the, the existing um, trees uh, will add some layer of, of privacy. Uh, there are some mature uh, canopies uh, in front of the house, uh, but yes, is uh, also we provided um, balconies for for the client to have some flexibility if he wants to to you know to incorporate a, uh, like a like a movable ornamental uh, planter or you know or or, or something that um, to you know to to add warmth you know when. Uh, to the to the house uh, when when it's been uh, used, um, but yes, it's a it's definitely a, a good point. The low e coating um, is one of the elements that is very efficient. It's very energy, energy efficient for the for the glazing, um, and it has this this kind of um, effect at night. Um, so it's something to to be aware of. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mr. Barrow, was that it, or you? Sorry, you. Have um, that's it. I'm I'm done. Thank you. May Thank I you. ask another question, if I may, um, Mr. Chairman? Lester, <laughs> did you hire the landscape architect, or was that the owner? I hired the landscape architect. You hired. Yes. So you did have a conversation with him in terms of your concept and so forth, correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Okay. That's all. Yes, in, in terms of, for example, one of the notes that um, uh, was mentioned about the, the bamboos, I'm, I'm going to double check with him because I'm aware that there are some species of bamboos that are very invasive that could even compromise the footing. Uh, but there are others that are more light, that are more um, um, uh, friendly uh, to the adjacent structure that, that are not as, as strong. Uh, on top of that, I mean, I'm going to make sure that we use if we implement this bamboo, we implement a healthy one that doesn't, that is not hazardous to the house, to the structure. And, and on top of that, we're going to provide a root barrier to make sure that it doesn't compromise at all the, the adjacent structure. Well, yes, what I am going to tell you is that that picture that you have there, which shows it by a pool, it looks beautiful. It looks very nice, except nobody thinks about when this thing starts to grow or any of these plant materials starts to grow. This is why I've always said uh, you have to be aware how each material is going to grow. What is it going to look like 10 years from now exactly. and, and the maintenance and so forth. That's why it's beautiful in that picture. But I can tell you, if you go back to that house, they're probably going, they're going nuts with that bamboo. Understood. <laughs> yes. They, yeah, they, the way it represented was the way it would be planted, but uh, the intention actually is, uh, as long as the roots don't, don't compromise the structure, to grow through behind the hey, frame. Hey, it's your call, man. When you see through the frame, it's your you call. see uh -huh. the bamboo filtering through. Yeah, Lester, you want clumpers, not runners. Bamboos are either clumpers okay. or runners. Clumpers, okay. they That's right. form a circle. The runners go in every which way and <laughs> very difficult to control. So, so hmm. run, runners... And that's a runner, way. baby. That's a runner. Yes. <laughs> You do not want runners. You want what's called the clumpers. They oh. grow in a circle. Clumpers and they're much grow. slower and much slower growers than the runners. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for your, for your feedback. I, I will discuss this technicality with the landscape architect to make sure that we're on the same, in the same page. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on, Ms. Sierra. Hi, um, good morning. I think the, the design is beautiful. And I just want to say that the good thing about going last is that everyone, or almost last, everyone said just about everything I wanted to say. <laughs> and they've come back for, for, for a reiteration of it. So um, my main thing, um, I had the currents to talk about. Um, Mr. Suarez took care of that solar panel issue someone else mentioned. I uh, love that you're keeping a lot of the existing trees. And then my other thing is that you're so close with the, I mean, you're at the impervious calculation. But I, I one thing I do want to say is that I had a, uh, I had, somewhat of a, I mean, I was on a way larger lot. I was on an acre, but the, the whole, the steps to that 
outdoor area downstairs from the pool, those pavers. Um, it's very sad that you're so right up to the impervious because if you could just put an extra an extra row between that little structure and out to the pool, it would save a lot of slipping and sliding from people that just want to walk through the grass and get in that area and, and just it just gives it a little bit more area maybe for one lounge chair. But just absolutely, a suggestion. Absolutely. And then I love that you also, this is one thing no one said. Um, I love that you have the exhaust over the barbecue because everyone will start smelling like burgers and hot dogs, you know, after a yes. while. <laughs> yeah. That was it. That was a, a note from my client. And there is one I, I that, one that I forgot to mention in the presentation that the, the intention of my client is to be able to open the, the glazing uh, that opens into the pool to open it to, to open it to the outdoor center. room. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so the interior yeah. feels like an exterior, you know? So yeah, yeah you this, have an outdoor room. This continuous transition. Um, so gorgeous. in that sense, the, those narrow steps uh, will feel a little bit less, uh, you know, um, um, less uh, slender, you know? Um, yeah, just watch out with the material because uh, yes. when you yes. step in, if your feet are wet, like I can tell you I had a concussion yes. from uh, slipping and hitting a door frame. When they found yes, me that, that, is a, that is yeah. a really good point. When I had Very my dangerous. house, yeah. we, we had we had a marble pile, <laughs> FYI. So yes. just a suggestion, so you avoid it. Yes, yes, slipper, no, no marble outside. Everywhere. Yeah, oh. also like, even in the covered terrace, we would go with sleep resistant tile uh, to make sure that there is no... Yeah. No, oof. <laughs> this is, I, still have, I still have a scar. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, Lester. Right. Lester, uh, Lena actually just brought up a very good uh, point. Um, when you're looking at the grading, every comment that Mariano and I already made, in addition yes. to that, please also look at your sidewalks and your driveway. Make sure that the driveway that's within the property that you're draining, show you're, you're going to have to put a slope and it's got to go away from the, from the street, you know, the yes. part yes. in there. So you don't, right now you just show the driveway dra uh, draining towards the street. It's, you cannot have your drive, your driveway's got to drain either within itself or to the side yard. Understood, understood, yes, okay. have to be correct. So, so make sure you show yeah. elevations on your driveway and that it does not go out into the public right away. Okay. You know, and I don't know, like right now you just show a concrete paved driveway. To me, that continuing the pattern of the driveway out to the public road would probably look nicer. Okay. Um, just a suggestion. Um, also put your side triangle, I know, where you put it makes sense. You also need to show a slight triangle on, on the property line. Make sure you don't put any trees there. Thank you, Mr. Suarez. Ms. Cruz. Oh, good. good morning. Could I, just, uh, could I just recap? So, so um, uh, for your suggestion, ideally it would be best to, to continue with the same uh, asphalt of the, of the street, the driveway up to the property line, correct? That's my, that's personal. I mean, that's what I would do if it was that's my just, house. Yeah, that, that, that's just an opinion. That's not. That's that. my opinion. It's not a code requirement. That's just an opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I first want to start off by saying, Lester, you did a fabulous job presenting the, the, the site plan and just your flow and being able to answer all the questions and, and change between all of the different plans. It made it very easy on my behalf to just follow um, everything you spoke about. I love the position of the property on the lot itself. I'm sure with the matured trees, it's gonna be beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you so I really I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Um, I, I, you know, everybody's pretty much said everything already. So, I mean, my, my thing is more of the uh, solar panels uh, that we spoke about with Mr. Barrera. Um, I'm a big fan of the pool uh, lining up to the living room like that. I think it gives it a really good detail. Um, you know, something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, just make sure structurally, like we talked about, that that's feasible. Um, other than that, I, I think that we're ready to make a motion. Um, mm -hmm. So if there's anybody on the, on the board that wants to make a motion. I move to approve for preliminary with um, board comments. And staff comments. And staff comments, sorry. Yes, sir. I'll second it. So we're telling them to approve. That means they'll come back with final. So just making sure everybody understands that. Yes. With comments. Got it. Yes. And the big, right. uh, big thing is make sure the elevation on the uh, grading. That's, okay. that's probably what needs to be improved the most. Got it. 
All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and vote since we have a second. Uh, Lena? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Mr. Suarez? Yes. Lee? <sighs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Barrera? Yes. Mr. Corral? Yes, sir. And yes for me for preliminary approval. Congratulations. We'll see you here when we get back with final with all the details and MEP and all that stuff, okay? Thank you very much for, for your time. Thank, Thank you for you. the presentation, Mr. Okay. Zarro. Very thorough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our that concludes our only one for today, which is rare that we only have one. Uh, <laughs> let, let's move over to approval of minutes. Um, I'm assuming most of you saw the drafts of the meeting minutes of last uh, two weeks ago. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote of all the, in favor of approving the minutes. Please say aye. 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 Any, any nays? Aye. Any nays? No nays. Okay, so we are approving the minutes from two weeks ago of April 19th. The next ERPB meeting will be May 17th. Um, with that, I think we have any any other concluding comments or things? Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple questions. One is, I know that um, one of the options that applicants have is that if they don't want to put meet the tree code, they can give to a fund. Um, I haven't read up on it recently. Is that um, something they can just do or do they have to try their best to meet the tree requirements on their property and then have that as a fallout if they cannot meet the tree requirement? Or can they just say, you know what? We want no trees on our lot and we were just paying to a fund. No, no. No, no, no. I'm asking the question. Well, how does the code read right now? You have to, I'll tell you right now, you have to meet the requirements. And if there's mitigation, your first thing that you have to do is try to put the trees for mitigation first. Then afterwards, you put the required trees as per code. Okay. First mitigation, then code. Then if you can't fit them, then you're absolutely correct. Then they will uh, go to Marcus and Marcus says, okay, you got uh, 10 trees and that's $10,000. Okay. No. <laughs> No, I agree. I, I think that we want to keep the trees on the lots. That's one of the things that South Miami has going for it, that yeah. on a per square foot basis, it's one of the heaviest wooded uh, trees in South Miami. And it's uh, what makes South Miami so special. One of the many things. So um, the other question I have is, where are we with people putting fences in their front yards that do not meet the code requirement? Right. Like, like, what do you mean by that? Uh, that up to four feet, they can do a solid wall, anything they want. Above four feet, the portion that's above four feet has got to be 60% transparent. And I can't tell you along 80th Street, along uh, 84th Street. I mean, I'm driving around, and I just see all these fences that are taller four, than four feet, and it looks like they're using the open area below four feet as part of the area above four feet, and it's not what the, the way the code reads. And I know that we brought this question up uh, months ago and it was being reviewed and it just doesn't seem that unless they requested and got approved for a variance, the onus is on the submission people. If it was, if it, whether we brought it up or not, the onus is code compliance is by the applicant. Where are we with that? Because I'm looking at 80th, I'm looking at 84th and, and other properties, and there just seems to be a whole bunch of fences going up that don't meet code. So are you are you talking about that we need to modify the code, or are you saying that you want to go go get code? No, I think I, right now the code, they're supposed to comply with code. Right. So, and if they're and not. If they're not. There's so what, two houses right on 59th and 84th that don't meet the code requirement. And he's saying, Jose saying that we want where are we with that? where are we who's who's working on it who's doing the inspection or who's you know yeah so this was this has been over a month right well, I mean, right well it's been several months since we brought it up and i've just heard that it's being reviewed it's, but it's, okay. it's black and white it is well it, it's my understanding that if someone wants to put in a fence they're supposed to get a building permit in order to get a building permit it's supposed to go through planning and zoning and it has to be approved by planning and zoning uh Ms. Tompkins, am I correct about that? 
No, you're correct, of course. Um, Lourdes would be reviewing um, any permit that comes across her desk, and I'm sure she wouldn't be approving anything that she doesn't believe meets code. Uh, but so but I, I, let, me, let me throw caution out there. Uh, zoning, building departments reviews are cursory reviews. The onus, 100% of the responsibility for code compliance is on the design team, not on the city. And so unless they ask for a variance, just because their plans got approved does not relieve them that, oh, just because zoning did not catch it, unless they ask for a variance, when they sign into their drawing, they're saying these drawings are code compliant. Okay, so, on so, so what, what you should do is make a list of all those properties, notify code enforcement, and let them know and have them investigate it. Well, 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 Mr. Pepe, I've already brought up 84th Street. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to drive 84th Street. It's only four blocks. 80th Street is only, well, where the biggest problem is, is around four blocks between 57th, and it's actually more between 59th and 62nd is yeah. the bigger problem. And there's other places. And I brought it up on the one on 50, one of them on 59th and 80th was already CO'd when I noticed it, unfortunately. The other one was not when I brought this up. It was still under construction. It's very close to CO. And again, it, the onus is not on the building department or zoning to catch these variances. It's on the design professional. When they sign and seal these drawings, they're saying they're complying with every code requirement. Well, yeah, no. but from the design team, from the design team, they can design it accordingly and they sign and seal it. They're they're not in charge of inspection or the actual. Oh yeah, no, I get that. Oh, I get that. well, well, yeah, they are not. If, they're not. It's if the, the, the design team is respo responsible for complying with ahead, code. Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Pepe. Give, give me the areas, and I will contact code enforcement and have them take a look. What what is it again? Okay, you got the corner of 59th and, and 80th. There's two houses there on either side, on the south side. And this one, the one, those two I brought up that, months that, ago, that, the that one on 84th. Wait, wait, wait a second. So, so 80th Street, right, and 59th Avenue. Right, right, there's two there. As you go west on 80th, there's several houses that are under construction um, that have the, the same problem. And then between on 50 on 84th between 59th and 62nd, there's several houses that have this problem. Okay, uh, 84th Street between 59th and 82nd. Now the two on 59th I brought up two months ago, and one of them is getting a CO right now. Okay. All right. By the way, guys, what I was saying. Oh, it happened that you were mentioning that. And I was looking at something I'm doing here in AutoCAD, and I go, whoa, I thought I lost the, the drawing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm working as I'm doing this with you guys. <laughs> I like your UM orange, by the way. Multitasking. So right, uh, one more thing. The, so the, as you were saying about the, the responsibility falls on the design team of these houses, but how do when you like if it wasn't for us no one in the city would know that these people are not adhering to the code right oh. it, it, let Has me throw something else out there with what you just said if we're only enforcing when people complain what happens is you basically have approved it and there is no enforcement because right. either you enforce it throughout the city or you don't and if if, like, for instance, if I wanted to not comply with the code and put up a fence like that, my first argument would be, I don't care what the code said. Look, the city has allowed these 20 fences going up, and, and, right. and now it's selective enforcement. So, and that's so it, very so, dangerous. So it, it may be, and, and I've, uh, you know, I've researched selective yeah. enforcement. I know what you're talking about, but the problem is that there are many times code enforcement. There's just so many. I think right now we have two people in code enforcement. 
right. to patrol the entire city. They have certain areas that they patrol. They can't be expected to know every single section of the code. There are certain types of violations that are typical, you know, high weeds and trash and things like that. But when you get to the building code, it's much more technical. Uh, so, yeah, this is a yeah, lot of times, a lot of times, a lot, yeah, a lot of times they don't investigate the actual sections of the code until someone makes a complaint and lets them know about it. So it, it's the reality of the situation. And yeah. yes. Yeah. No, I was going to say, yeah, I, I agree with you. Go ahead, Lourdes. <laughs> I'm going to piggyback from Mr. Thomas Pepe. Uh, the reality of the situation, most likely, all of those homes, because he's mentioned quite a few locations, okay? So without mentioning a specific address, okay? But he mentioned two streets, a few blocks. So we've got a few locations. I seriously doubt that all those homes have built a physical barrier without a permit, okay? Now, Mr. Suarez, you were at our office and you informed us of this situation, of this concern of yours. And um, staff also pointed out to, to you if you had a code enforcement issue to obviously state it with code enforcement. Now, to be fair to all these homeowners and all this concern that you've raised, like I said, I'm sure most of these, it's not something that you say, well, these homeowners did these physical barriers, they constructed them without a permit and they did what they wanted. I don't think- I didn't say the without case. a permit. They got I, a permit. But, but typically when you don't get a permit is when you do what you like and they don't obey with code or comply with code. Typically that's when something like that happens. In one situation, I could see that someone put up a fence without a permit, who knows, it might happen, okay? So it doesn't meet the code because it wasn't, it didn't go through the process. That's one scenario. But you're raising concern, numerous homes that don't meet code. Now, I myself asked you to mention it to code enforcement. Did I not? Yeah, I did mention it to code enforcement, okay, yes. but it was with me. Now, what I think is happening is that the way you review these homes and the way staff <clears throat> has reviewed and has been consistent in reviewing all of these fences are very different. The 60%, yes, is above the four feet. But when you have a five foot in height fence, for example, the 60%, you've got 100 in that one upper foot where you did not install a fence, you see? So all I'm saying at this point in time is that these reviews of these permits have been consistent. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Lourdes, The code is very clear and it's very straightforward. So either we change the code to allow these type of fences or we enforce the code. You know, this, yeah, is, uh, this isn't a gray area. It's either, hey, you can do this to five, six feet or you can do this to four feet and above four feet, you do 60%. And yeah. And, you know, because it's not fair to people where you have architects that are actually reading the code and doing their best effort to comply with code, and others that are looking the other way. Yeah, but so, you don't know that you don't know if it's the architect doing that design, and I think that this is something that we need to go figure out. You know, not maybe on this board meeting here, but this is something from collectively from a staff and all that to figure out what's the best process to go on that. Because you can't you can't point the finger at architects. You can point the finger at contractors. You can point the finger at the owners after the fact. So. You know, it, it's it, it, it's not it's not replying on that. And I think we just well, need to understand what the process is I and take it offline, take it offline because it's not really, yeah. you know, I, everybody's I, just listening I, to this. I, and we, I, we, I, we I disagree. I disagree with you. The architect and engineers are absolutely when they sign and seal the drawing, they're responsible for code compliance, period. And, no, and they're not actually. They're they're responsible for making sure that the drawings are code compliant. They're not responsible for making sure the construction is to plan. Oh, 
No, these, these I would tell you that these are new houses, and I will. I, I you don't know that though, Mr. Oh, Suarez. Yeah. You don't know that. Okay, so so then 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 whoever the building official needs to make sure that the fences are per. And uh, they haven't. They, and they should have. They have inspections that go that to go ahead and sign off on every site. And go, zoning has an inspection that they go and check all that stuff. I've been. I've seen where code eight is too high, or you, this is not per code, and okay. they make you take it down. So I've seen it. What? So it, that's taken. the process. That's okay, not a function of taken. our board, Mr. Suarez. We need to take this offline because that is not a function of our meeting. That is not on our meeting agenda, and that's not what we do. If you, you, you know, if you need to address that and what you see, and you want that checked on, I think you know, following. Yeah, we just got to go over the process. <laughs> okay. Well, I would like to know, as an ERPB board member, is this something that we're going to come and comment on? I'd like to know is let the city go do their inspection. Let us know if this is acceptable. How they got constructed because if it's something that we just look in the other way then i'll stop making the comments on it so i would like to know as a board member what happened in the all these cases because this is i can understand this happening in one two houses maximum three but this is on way too many houses this is happening but we, we we've never we've, we've never every time that we've seen it on the board we've commented on it i mean we're doing uh, I, our I job as a board I would say we probably missed it on some because it's impossible to catch absolutely every deficiency. So and, I, and that's I not say, again, and it's not I our job to catch that. To be honest with you, right? And so I would like to know what's happened as a board member. What happened with these houses? And if they do, just come back to us because again, I, you know, do we enforce it? Or not. I just like to know what happened in these cases. All right, but uh, but uh, Mrs. Sierra is correct that we and I'm. I'm kind of surprised. I just looked at it now. With city commission meetings, there's an agenda item for general discussion. There's nothing on our agenda for general discussion. I don't know whether or not it needs to be added or or not. Mr. Suarez, if you go if you go on there tonight, That's if you it. go on there tonight, I'll be listening to you. No, no, I'm I'm leaving it up to the board, and if it's something that 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 is not. That they don't want to enforce, then I'm going to stop looking at it. I don't it. think it's our job to enforce. It's not our job to enforce. Well, um, I think I'll say that that's uh, that's not the right attitude. You got to do your job on the board, and we got to look at the at yeah, the you just, at the, you at the application as they come in, and you yeah. have every right as a citizen living there to make your comments in terms of bringing it up to the city. But yeah. then from there, it's you know it's it, it's it's not right. it's really. As I said, I brought it up to zoning and how they want to handle. It. I'm deferring. And then, to then you did your job from that perspective, yeah. and I understand what you're saying. But I'm again. We can't catch I, everything. The design professionals and the builders have to do it for code, and I'm just bringing up that that they're skyrocketing, and I could just see other architects. Well, this house did it, so I'm going to do it here, and and it's just in the last six months, the amount of these fences that are going up is crazy. And I'm like, hey, you know, everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to do it. So I'm deferring this to zoning and how they want to handle it. In the meantime, you got to continue with your same attitude in terms of uh, uh, looking at every new home and they're, they're compliant and so forth. Because otherwise, yeah. I could say, oh, the hell with this. I don't live here. You know, but I care. Well, I, I really care that's about okay. this. That's care. why I'm here. And that's why I say either either change the code or, or, or do the enforcement on it. But right now, it's just the amount of these fences going up is crazy. All right, All right guys. We'll have a, have, a, have a great Tuesday. Enjoy. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Have a good morning. Rest of the morning. Have a good morning, Lourdes. Thank you. Bye, Lourdes. Bye, Marcus. Bye. Jane. Thank you guys.